Hello, friends. Bible study part two. Uh, the Niv Acts uh, chapter eight. We're going to finish out chapter eight here. It's going to be from verse 26 to uh, verse 40. Uh, this one is called Philip and the Ethiopian. So um, since Philip had had went into Samaria and brought them the Holy Spirit and teed up for, you know, Peter and John to go do their thing. Uh, Philip, because remember, Philip was a uh, follower of John the Baptist before he was a follower of Jesus. He did as John the Baptist told him to do. Uh, I know we covered that in the video the other day when we talked about Philip going into Samaria anyway. So, now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. That's it. That's all the instruction he got. Go there. So he started out and went on his way to meet an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of Cadence, Candace, of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship. And on his way home, he was sitting in his chariot, reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. So I want you to understand this. He did not give Philip a bunch of instructions. Philip understood his job is to bring people in to kneel next to him in service to the Lord. Not to glorify himself, not to have all the answers before he left, but to go where Spirit was sending him that day without further instruction needed, without further explanation needed, because that is faith. Okay. So he just went and did what God told him to do. Because sometimes it's, that's just the way it is. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading the Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you're reading? Philip asked. Because he understood the assignment. He understood he was being sent to go down that road with no real explanation because he was going to have to go interact with this human being. Sometimes... If you're in alignment with the Holy Spirit like that, where you understand it's shining through you and out to the world, the Creator will do that. He sometimes will have you specifically cross paths because there's somebody there that needs to hear from you in that moment. I have it happen to me all the time. Um, how can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So we invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Like, if you understand what this person is saying, come explain it to me. The eunuch was reading uh, this passage of the scripture. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb before the shearer is silent, so did he not open his mouth. In his humil humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me please, who is this prophet talking about? Himself or someone else? Then Philip began with the ver that very passage of the scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. Why shouldn't I be baptized? Oh, it's got a footnote of D. Some late manuscripts uh, use baptized. Uh, he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but 
went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared at, I don't know how to, I'm not going to pronounce this name of this town line right properly, I've, I suspect. It's A-Z-O-T-U-S, T-U-S, Azotis, that's how I would pronounce that, and traveled about preaching the gospel at all of the towns until he reached Caesarea. So obviously a very Roman town. So obviously Philip is quite good at getting people to want to be baptized, to getting people to feel the faith. And he has that ability because he's staying in alignment with the Holy Spirit. He remembers his assignment and he is doing it to the best of his ability in any one moment because the Lord leads him around and he just goes where the Lord leads him. Go with the flow of the day. Do what you can and pay attention to your surroundings because Creator could very well be putting you in front of someone today, somebody new, somebody different. How do you interact with someone today in such a way that you bring them what they need or you get what you need from them? That's often how he works. When we are in most need in one particular place or another, he will send us there. And he'll do it, really, at no cost to you. Because that's usually just how it works. So as we go about the world today, remember, sometimes we are the answer, but we should always be looking for the answer for our problems in the guise of experts in what we're doing. This man was a novice. He had questions he couldn't understand. God sent him an expert. That's often how the exchange works. Whether you're the expert or you're the seeker, it doesn't matter. Remember that as you go about the world today. In fact, that's a great way of remembering to keep our own self in check with our ego. Sometimes we have the answer and sometimes we must seek the answer because that's the way life is actually supposed to go. No one person is responsible for knowing all the things in this universe other than creator in the first place. So look to your people around you for the solutions you need. He always sends the helpers. Mr. Rogers told us that when we were little kids. <laughs>